Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Today's program is brought to you in part by the financial support of our listeners, you can support the show on a one-time basis using the Zelle app to box13 at greatdetectives.net. And you can also become one of our ongoing Patreon supporters for as little as $2 per month. Just go to patreon.greatdetectives.net. Now it is time for this week's episode of The Man Called X. The original air date is February 26, 1952, and the title is Orinoco Basin. Listen to Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, adventure, intrigue, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. A century and a half ago, a dream was born in the mind of a man. A dream of a country where life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness were the birthright of every citizen. And on the day he was elected as his country's first president, he knew that his dream had come true. The man, Simon Bolivar. The country, Venezuela. Now, in the dining room of the Hotel Benita in Caracas, capital of Venezuela, there sits another man with a dream. His name is Luis de la Costa, and he's telling of his hopes and his aspirations to a longtime friend. Uh, just think about it, Ken. Thousands of my people, their villages isolated for centuries, will at last be able to enjoy the benefits of modern civilization. Schools, hospitals, decent homes. It's a wonderful dream, Louis. Ah, but it's to be a reality, too. When we have completed the Bolivar Waterway. Bolivar Waterway? Oh, you mean your old idea of uh, opening the interior rivers to navigation? See, si, yeah. see. Si. By building a waterway almost 200 miles long. Uh, it's being financed by American interests. Who would profit handsomely from the iron ore mountains of the interior? But... Someone, some country perhaps, can does not wish that ore to reach your hungry steel mills. Mm. Hmm? Having trouble on the construction, John? Si, si. Break ton of equipment, vital materials lost or stolen. A uh, dam has suddenly collapsed. It, it can tell me, does the name Colenda mean anything to you? Colenda, sure. Freelance international crook, specializing in sabotage. Is Colenda behind your trouble? Uh, I have reason to think so, Ken. That's why I come to you. And the first thing that you should know is... All right, Chris. I'll see what I can do. But, Mr. Chief, be reasonable. you got to tell me where I can find Mr. Rex. Zell Schmidt, the answer is no. But he needs my invaluable services. He'll be lost without me. And besides all that... You're you... broke. Yes, no. No, no. no. What's that got to do with it? Pagan, this is one time you're not going to get in Ken's hair. You're not going to foul up the assignment he's working on, and you're not going to chisel him out of any more slight consideration. Mr. Now Chief. get out of my office. But, but... Get out. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> you think after all the years we've worked together... Doing things for me. Hello? Hello, Chief. Oh, Ken, glad to hear you. Glad to hear from you. How are things at (laughs) wherever you are? What are you so happy about? I just had a delightful little interview with Pagan Zellschmidt. Haven't enjoyed anything so much in years. But uh, what can I do for you, Ken? Send Pagan down here to meet me. Sure, I'll be glad to. I'll see the... What? I need him in Venezuela right away. Ken, you can't do that to me. You, what do you want him for? Five years ago, he was mixed up with a sabotage ring in Lisbon. Somebody named Colenda was at the head of it. 
But listen. Colenders, this is down here on the Boulevard Waterway. I need Pagon to make a positive identification. But Ken... I'll talk to you later, Chief. So long. But, but... Trouble you for a moment, a moment? Sure, what can I do for you? But I'm lost without my dictionary. Positively lost. English, Spanish. Oh, oh well, Spanish, English, that is. And I must find Maria Luisa. Yes, I positively must. Maria Luisa? A boat, sir. Riverboat. Going up the Orinoco to the Bolivar Waterway. Yes, the Bolivar. Uh, oh, by the way, I'm Professor Harkness. Artemides Harkness. Yes, the waterway. My name's Ken Thurston, Professor. And the boat you're looking for is right over there. Eh? Oh, it is. well, thank you, Mr. Thurston. Thank you very much. What's your interest in the waterway, Professor? Why, the Lalia Preparata, of course, yes. The Lalia Preparata. <laughs> saprophytic, that is, you know, yes. Saprophytic. You're looking for rare orchids. Well, that's what I said, didn't I? Uh, yes, well, I'm a botanist, you know. Yes, a botanist. Many rare specimens in the interior. Very many. Wonderful opportunity to travel by water. The Boulevard Waterway, you know? Yes, I, yeah, I know, yeah. Here's the Maria Luisa. Uh, Maria Luisa? Oh, yes, yes, thank you. Thank you. Are you looking for something, gents? My name's Ken Thurston, and this is Professor Harkness. We're looking for the skipper of this boat. You found her, mister, so what? Uh, well, I, I have passage. Uh, there's a ticket somewhere. I purchased it, you know. Ah, uh, yeah, I... yeah, Professor. I already got you booked. It's this Thurston I want to know about. You interested in going upriver to the waterway? That's right. It'll be 50 bucks, American, cash in advance. Sure. Be glad to... Here you are. Okay. We're shoving off in ten minutes. Stow your duffel below. Duffel? Luggage, Professor. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, you can. Uh, lug- oh, of course, yes. Luggage. All right, Thurston, what's the pitch? What's with you in the waterway? Well, that's pretty much my business, isn't it? Not the way I figure. Just how do you figure? You're traveling light. You're no construction stiff. You're going up to the waterway, and that, to me, adds up to a snoop job of some kind. That means I got something you need. Like what? Insurance. What kind? The kind Lua Della Costa needed and didn't have. Oh. News travels pretty fast around here, doesn't it? We were talking about an insurance deal. I suppose I can get over. Sure. Take your time. You'll be okay till we hit the construction job. And after that? <laughs> you name it, pal. Yeah. Well, speaking of names... Betty Corcoran. Corcoran. That's right. What did you think it was going to be? Glenda? Okay, Thurston, here's the waterway construction job. You buying that insurance? The answer's no, Miss Corcoran. You're a sucker. Why? This job's poison for people on the wrong side of the fence. But there's plenty of dough to be made on the right side. Your side? Colenders? You gotta pay for what I know, mister. And if you don't... First, the construction office. Yeah. Quiet, let's have that gun. Let's let's have it. Ah, That's better. Now, what's going on here? And just what business is it of yours, senor? Let's say I'm allergic to murder. Now, suppose you start talking. I suppose you go to the devil, senor. Wait a minute. Wait. It's possible this, this American represents the financial interest behind the Boulevard Waterway. Am I correct, senor? You might call it that. See, si. I am Manuel Florio, government inspector on the waterway. My hot-headed friend here is Jose Martinez, engineer in charge of the construction. Yeah, and this is Ken Thurston, okay. Now, let's hear what the fireworks were about. It's really quite simple. My friend Martinez is about to blast the passageway for the new riverbed. I expressed the opinion that he was using an excessive amount of dynamite, enough to bring the hillside down upon the cut that we have made. By way of answer, he reached for his gun. Wait, you feel the line, do oh, I... Martinez. <laughs> The only thing that's important now is that waterway. Let's go down and take a look at the dynamite charges. I'll be able to tell soon enough. All right. What was that? Oh. What the juice? The blast was set up too soon. See, si. with your heavy charge of dynamite, Martinez. And look here. Look. The 
to see what happened to the canal that was already built, Senor Thurston. Uh, completely buried. Yeah, a couple of million bucks worth of waterway shot. Just like that. Too bad you weren't carrying any insurance, isn't it, Mr. Thurston? <laughs> We'll return to the man called X in just a moment. Answer the call. Answer the call for volunteers to help during the Red Cross fund drive. Now is the time to lend a hand to the organization which is always ready with help wherever and whenever it is needed. As a fund drive volunteer, you help to save the life of a wounded soldier through the Red Cross blood center. You offer comfort to a crying child, a grieving mother. A good friend, good neighbor, a citizen to be proud of. That's a Red Cross Fund campaign volunteer. Call your nearest Red Cross office and help the Red Cross give help to the helpless, hope to the hopeless, as a Red Cross Fund campaign volunteer. And now, Act Two of The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, with Leon Belasco as Pagan Zellschmidt. Louis Dallacosta's dream was about to be realized. A dream of a giant waterway carrying precious iron ore from the interior of Venezuela for America's hungry steel mills and bringing schools, hospitals, homes to thousands of his people in return. And then sabotage struck the waterway. Dallacosta was murdered. And now a premature dynamite explosion has just buried an already completed canal. Yeah, Thurston, that's what this job should have had, all right. A little insurance to take care of things like that powder blast. You are wrong, Senorita Corcoran. What this waterway needs is guns to protect it from its enemies. Or perhaps, Martinez, it needs engineers who will listen to advice regarding an excessive amount of dynamite. That kind of talk won't get us anywhere, Florio. Martinez, the damage is done. Suppose you check, see how bad it is, see what could be done to rectify it. I already know the answer to that, Senor. But you have taken my gun away from me. That's too bad. I'm afraid our construction engineer is too hard-headed and impulsive for his own good. So since he's got blood in his eye when he looks at you, Florio. Maybe he doesn't like the idea of being blamed for that premature blast. Maybe he figures somebody else is responsible. And just who would that somebody else be, Senor Thurston? It's your question. Got an answer? If you will excuse me, I shall check upon the damage with Martinez. But a word of advice first, if you do not mind. No, no, go right ahead. The construction of a waterway such as this is best left in the hands of experts. Amateurs are prone to run into accidents, possibly even better ones. Hasta luego, señor. Hello? Hello. Is this the waterway construction outfit? Pagan. That's right. Pagan Zellschmidt. I'd like to talk to... Oh, 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 hello, Mr. Thurston. How's everything going there with it? Waterways and bolivars and stuff? What the devil's been keeping you? Why aren't you here? Sunburn. Sunburn? Sure. Boy, that sun's plenty hot here on the beaches. There are no beaches in Caracas. That's right. Uh, but you ought to see this one here in Miami. Miami? Well, I had a little trouble in the plane, you understand, and... By the time I got through explaining uh, to those police characters about that poor, lonely little steward as well, <laughs> the plane for Venezuela had already left. Pagan, so help me. If you don't get another plane out of there right away... Oh, don't worry about the thing, Mr. X. I'll be there in plenty of time to put the fingers on that calendar characters for a slight consideration, of course. <laughs> is over onto the other side of the hill. See, si, that is correct. Run your lines over there. Ain't hey, Sejida. Come along. Looks like you're shifting the base of operations, Martinez. Mind telling me why? Senor Thurston, the accident last night was not as damaging as we feared. It will be possible to reroute the channels, and a simple blasting operation will do it. Like the last one? <laughs> Senor, 
I agree that the blast was much greater than it should have been. But the extra dynamite was not placed there by me. Nor did it come from our powder house. What makes you think that? Because there is a sulfur mine operating back in those hills. Early this morning, I found over 50 empty dynamite boxes near that mine. They still had yellow sulfur dust on them. Anything else? Only this. I understand the controlling interest in that sulfur mine is held by Senorita Perry Corcoran. Just one moment, please. Uh, just one moment. Ah, uh, well, I, I thought I'd never find you. Never. Hello, Professor. What's on your mind? Miss Corcoran. That is, she asked me to give you a message. Oh, yes, what, a message. What, what, what is it? Well, she would like to see you, I believe. It was about... Oh, those boxes. Oh, my, there are lots of them. What are they, Mr. Thurston? Empty dynamite cases. Dynamite? Are they real? Oh, well, well, imagine that. Empty dynamite key? Oh, well, well, no, well. Look, look, the message, Professor, from Betty Corcoran. Oh, yes, yes, Miss Corcoran. Well, she wanted to see you about dynamite. And a man. A man named, uh... Man, oh, dear, dear, dear. What was that name again? Colinda? Oh, yes, 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 that's it. Colinda. She's waiting for you now, Mr. Thurston, at the sulfur mine. <laughs> Betty Corcoran, are you in here? Funny. I thought I saw something move in it. Well, Betty, is that you over... Oh. Huh. Uh. Are you feeling better now, Senor Thurston? <sighs> what? Who, uh... Oh, Florio. See, that's quite correct. Uh, what are you doing here? Or do you make a habit of dropping into sulfur mines at odd hours? Professor Harkness informed me as to where I might find you. Before or after I came into this mine. I'm not quite certain I understand your meaning. Somebody hit me, Florio. Right now it looks like a toss-up between you and Betty Cochran. It was neither of us, Senor. What makes you so sure? Because when I entered the mine, you were already unconscious. And I am certain that you cannot doubt Senorita Corcoran's alibi. Why not? Here, I show you. There, senor. Oh. See? As you can see, she's quite dead. Senorita Corcoran is dead. That's right, Martinez. Murdered. And now I suppose the work on the Bolivar waterway will come to a halt until her murder is solved. See, si, Martinez. I have placed a telephone call to the authorities in Caracas. Meanwhile, all work on the project will cease. Of course. You could not afford to wait another 24 hours. For then we will be ready to blast open the new riverbed and the Bolivar waterway will be finished. I'll get it. Well... Hello, Mr. Thurston. This is Pagan Zellschmidt. Guess who? Oh, for... where are you calling from now? That's right, Mr. Thurston. I- I'm calling all right from Trinidad. Trinidad? Well, uh, the aeroplane lost a couple of wheels or something, and I got all grounded up here. Hurry up, Pagan, darling. Carmen wishes you to die. Oh, sure, baby, sure, sure. Pagan, you've got just 24 hours to get, uh, get up here. And so help me if you're even one second late. Mr. Thurston, if there's one thing you can always depend on, you can always depend on a salesman. Keeping busy, Martinez? Oh, Senor Thurston. Looks like you're figuring on setting off a dynamite blast all by yourself. The 24 hours is up. And I intend to see that the Bolivar waterway is completed tonight. Pretty risky, isn't it? What risk, Senor? 
I detonate the explosive, and the river rushes into its new channel. Then there will be nothing that Florio can do. Yeah, if it works out. And why should it not? I just found 30 more dynamite cases from the sulfur mine lying over the hill. Empty. So we were about to have a repeat performance of the last explosion, Senor. That's right, Florio. It's set to go up 10 minutes from now. Only this time, without the extra dynamite. I tell you, I know nothing about that sulfur mine dynamite. Yes, but I saw the empty boxes too, Mr. Martinez. Mr. Thurston showed them to me, so I'm a witness. <laughs> yes, I'm a witness. But for the life of me, I do not know what this is all about, Mr. Thurston. It's simple, Professor. A man named Dr. Costa had a dream about this waterway. It would bring a new way of life to the people in the Venezuelan hills. And... Iron ore for steel mills in the United States. Yes, but what does all this to do with sulfur mines and, uh, and dynamite? Somebody has been sabotaging the waterway to keep that iron ore from leaving here and using the sulfur mine dynamite to do it. A man by the name of Colenda. Colenda? Oh, yes, yes, of course. The man, Miss Corcoran. The one she... Well, before she was... Yes, Colenda. And just who is this Colenda, senor? Have you, uh, have you got a silver coin, Florio? A boulevard or a peso? Why, see, see, I have one. Here. Hey. What about you, Martinez? And Professor Harkness? See, si. if you wish. Uh, here you are, Mr. Thurston. But I would like it back. My pension, it's not very large, you know. It's not very large. You'll get it back, Professor. These coins are all I need to tell me which one of you is Colenda. What do you mean? Colenda used dynamite from that sulfur mine. There was plenty of yellow sulfur dust on the empty boxes. Plenty more in the mine itself. He must have been covered with the stuff by the time he got through. But that means nothing. There is no sulfur dust on any of us. It can easily be washed out of clothing and off the skin. That is right, Martinez. But it can't be washed off silver. Silver? Of course. The chemical action of silver would leave a black coating. It would be... Thurston, look. Look, one of those coins. Sure. This one. Black. Yeah. Colenda gave it to me, didn't you? Professor Harkness. Hello, Mr. Thurston. Hey, gone. You don't have to worry about the thing. Get away from there, you idiot. But this character I'm standing between is Colenda. He's the one who... Oh! Oh, thank you, salesman, for getting in front of me. Adios, gentlemen. Hey. Hey, what's going on here, anyways? Uh, what, what happened? Get away from the door. Yes, look through the window, Florio. There he goes, into the speedboat at the dock. Oh, it's no use, Martinez. He's getting away. I don't think so, Florio. But you can see for yourself. He's already going down river. They're approaching the new channel where the new waterway will... in that boat. Colenda. Where they were. There's nothing. Nothing but... Yeah. That's right, Pagan. Hey. That noise. What is it? Well, you might call it the beginning of the Boulevard Waterway. But somehow I'd like to think of it as a dream coming true. And now, here again is our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. And my thanks to Gloria Blondell, Will Wright, Paul Richards, Howard McNear, and Tony Barrett. Next week, the icy wasteland of Alaska, where a deserted weather station holds the answers to a missing top-secret weapon. A man who dies twice. And one of the most unmitigated scoundrels the weather... Yes, that's right. That reminds me. Uh, Leon Belasco will be along as usual as Pagon Zelschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. Good night. The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, 
is a J. Richard Kennedy production with music by Milton Charles. Tonight's story was written by Sidney Marshall. This program is directed by Jack Johnstone. All characters and incidents on this program are fictitious, and any resemblance to actual characters or incidents is purely coincidental. Now, until next week, same time and station, this is Hal Gibney saying goodnight for The Man Called X. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Welcome back. I truly love Pagon in this episode. And all of the reports of why he hadn't yet made it to Venezuela. And of course, you have Howard McNear, who is able to turn to playing the villain in, you know, just a few seconds flat. Too bad we didn't get to hear more of them. Though I do have to say that I do like the kind of poetic justice at the end, as well as the hope it holds out that the dream of Ken's friend will ultimately be fulfilled. Well, I do want to go ahead now and thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to Emily, Patreon supporter since February 2020, currently supporting us at the rookie level of $2 or more per month. Again, thanks so much for your support, Emily. And that will do it for today. If you are enjoying this podcast on YouTube, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, mark the notification bell. We'll be back next week with another episode of The Man Called X. But coming up tomorrow, we have an adventure with Philo Vance, where... Is this today's collection, Donald? Uh, yes, Mr. Miller. I opened the mail myself this morning. And all the checks are here. Hmm? Uh-huh. Fine. Tell me, what's the total? $12,450. All the checks are made out to consolidated charities, Mr. Miller. Of course. That's so that no irresponsible party can cash them, Donald. You see, people who contribute to our campaign want to make sure that the money goes to charity. I understand, sir. Would you be interested in the total we've collected so far? Yes, what is the amount? Uh, here it is. $130,000. Good. And our campaign is less than two weeks old. Everything is going according to plan. Oh, Donald, has Morton Gary phoned today? Uh, not yet. I imagine he will, though. He's very interested in knowing how the drive is coming. He is taking that business of being chairman of Consolidated Charities too seriously. Oh? You think he may be a problem? Perhaps. It's, Gary is a very prominent man. We need him. His name on our letterhead assures the legitimacy of our organization. Mr. Miller. Yes, what happens if Mr. Gary finds out what's really happening to the money? You mean suppose he finds out that only a small percentage goes to charity and I pocket the rest? Yes, sir. I don't think he'll find out, Donald. I'll answer that. Hello? Mike? Elise Avery. Hello, Elise. I thought this was old man Gary calling in. What's going on? I just hit a big one, Mike. Some sucker just gave me a check for five grand. Good for you, girl. Bring it in with you. Sure. Just thought you'd like to hear the good news, that's all. See you later. Bye. Bye. Now, where were we, Donald? We were just talking about Morton Gary. And what would happen if he found out what we're doing and the money we're collecting? First of all, he isn't going to find out. No? No. I hope you'll be with us then. In the meantime, do send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash Radio Detectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.